What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we're out here bright and early this morning. Hadn't had a whole lot of sleep. Um, trying to beat the heat out here and Ben's having my shop lights. I have two of them out now. Um, I get a little better lighting with this door open, especially up under the dozer, the uh, light bouncing off the floor up under there so I can see. But um, I had this uh, engine and the pumps picked up here and I took a little time and rigged up some extra straps here, got this thing perfectly balanced. Uh, there's not very much tension on these just to keep the, the engine from spinning this way. And then I have this one right here to keep uh, it setting just level a little bit to tweak it. Um, that's what it took. But I got everything set and level. I wish I had the engine mounts that I had ordered in, but I don't. So that's going to create um, a little more trouble and frustration of putting those in after the fact. But I want to go ahead and get this thing stuck back in here and get all the lines and everything hooked back up. I would love to take this thing out to the pressure washer and just go to town with it. Um, but I'm afraid I will, uh, you know, blast the dirt off and it'll get into all these open ports and stuff I got. I've got rags stuck in some of them, but that's really you know not sufficient when you get hitting something with a, a pressure washer like i have it, it just blows stuff everywhere and i'm afraid stuff will wind up getting inside the pumps so uh i want to get all the lines hooked back up i have my uh my clamps over there that go here these was all covered in and uh dirt grease and mud i have those all cleaned up over here so that when i go to assembling them uh putting the hoses back on that none of that stuff falls off in the port Kind of got everything fairly well prepared to go back in there. Um, I wish I had this cable here, but I haven't ordered it yet. And uh, I think I mentioned that in the other video. There's the bad spot in it right there. I don't think I mentioned what this cable does. Uh, but basically, it goes to your hydraulic pump there, and it goes to your injector pump, and it hooks right here. And I just got it uh, stuck out here because it's it's stiff. It doesn't, it doesn't work very well, as you can see, because it's all messed up. But uh, anyway, the idea is whenever you move the throttle here on the injector pump, it pulls this cable in and out and it bleeds off, basically it bleeds off your pilot pressure to your, uh, to your pumps here, which is, is, goes here, which tells the pump how much stroke. And that's based off of the RPM or the power output of the engine, basically. So if you got it jack wide open, uh, it's going to not let off the pilot pressure. But if you got it, say, half throttle, you want uh, it to bleed off some pilot pressure so that if you're pushing, that it doesn't kill the engine. So basically, it keeps the, the pumps from overriding the engine, say, if you got it at half throttle. So uh, that's kind of the purpose of it. Uh, we're going to leave it unhooked for right now. And uh, we'll just, you know, we got it pulled pretty far forward, maybe all the way forward right there because that's wide open. Um, idle is back this direction and uh, whenever we put our other cables we'll, we'll get all that taken care of but uh, for right now just being able to move the dozer around it's not that important uh, but we will get a new one coming something else i need to order is this fuel primer right here this one is uh not so good it, it doesn't uh, something's messed up in the threads and i can't get it to hardly prime it, it don't work too well so uh, we'll be getting one of those as well and uh Anyway, I'm gonna get you guys set up over here and uh, see if we can get this thing stuck in there. It sure is sitting there nice. Hopefully it'll go in there nice without hanging up on everything. Uh, see where we gotta go there. And, and the bad part about this is, you know, I don't have anybody to, to watch and see what's going on. But uh, anyway, we're just gonna take it slow and uh, hopefully we'll get the thing stuck in there without tearing up nothing. Get this thing bolted back up. Um, I did have to solder the wires going to the glow plugs there, and I'm going to do something different on that. I may just put some uh, some big butt connector on. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet, but we'll cross that line when we get there. Um, anyway, as I say, I get you to see how I set up over here, and we'll get this thing stuck back in here.
All right, guys, it's a lot later, um, a lot hotter. I'm a lot dirtier and a lot tireder. So uh, I've about got this thing wrapped up, I think, as far as all the hoses go. I've got a lot of small things I'm gonna have to go back and tie up. I'm not worried about that. Um, I just wanna see if the thing will pump some fluid and all that. I've got the cooling stack stuck back in here. I just poured uh, regular water in it. I do have antifreeze over there. I just want to uh, test it with water. Uh, it's not hurting it to flush it out and run it for a few minutes. I got some tarp straps on the cooling stack to hold it forward here um, to keep from getting into the, the cooling fan there. And I'm ready to pour some hydraulic fluid in it. And I've got this cage here. I loosened the bolts up, took them out on the side, loosened these up so I could swing it out of the way, make it easier to put hydraulic fluid in there because it's almost next to impossible. Uh, you can do it. I did manage to get some in there um, the last time from the inside, standing on the tracks, but uh, this seems to be a little bit uh, better here, I believe, and uh, I should be able to pour it right in here off of this ladder from the back here. So I'm going to uh, get some hydraulic fluid poured in this thing, and uh, then we will see if we can get this thing started up and see does it move. Now, it still does not have any uh, uh, final drive shafts in it right here so it's really not going to move but it should push against the brakes uh, I'm going to leave the the valve right here off to the brakes right there whenever I test it and you should be able to hear the engine change sounds I have this cable that I told you that was bad earlier pull forward like as if, if it was at uh, wide open throttle but I'm not going to have it at wide open throttle and uh, so whenever I push forward or backwards on the joystick, you should hear the engine lug down and uh, may even kill the engine if we push it far enough. So uh, anyway, other thing is it may crank up and die a couple times. We may have to uh, hold a gas rag over it or something or WD-40 to get this thing primed because as I say, the primer on it is bad and I do not have one. So we're gonna have a little bit of trouble probably getting the air worked out of the system if I had to guess. But maybe not, who knows. So uh, let's get some hydraulic fluid poured in this thing and let's see what happens. We'll repeat that two more times and then we'll be ready to uh, start her up. Alright guys, I've got the three buckets of hydraulic fluid in it, got oil in it, um, we got five gallons of water in it, and I think we are ready to start this thing up and see what I left loose. Hopefully nothing. You guys ready? Ready to see if this thing makes some noise or something. Hopefully it makes good noises, not bad noises. Alright, I need to pull the straw back. Somewhere. I'll give her about right there. I don't want the front wide open here. 
Well, guys, we are not ready yet because I guess I got to hook up those wires. I thought they all went to glow plugs, but evidently uh, some of it goes to something else there that has to be hooked up to send power to the ignition switch. So we're not quite ready yet. Let me hook those wires up. All right, guys, y'all ready to try this again? I've got those wires soldered up. For those of you who missed out on the first video when I took the engine out or whatever, uh, the wires I'm talking about, there was a wiring harness that had four wires in it. They're big wires, about 10 gauge, that plugged together. You're supposed to be able to unplug them. And that little wire harness was melted together. And I think a couple of those wires go to the glow, glow plugs, and I'm not sure what the other ones go to. But anyway, I had to cut the wiring harness because I could not get the thing to unplug. Um, so anyway, that's what I had to do. I had to solder them back together. I don't have any uh, butt connector or anything big enough for 10 gauge. Uh, and it's hard to solder 10 gauge, but I may do try to solder with a torch. It ain't pretty, but it's hooked up. So let's see what happens. Turn the main power on.
promising. Um, the part brake is not releasing by the switch. I think they messed up, messed up whenever they put that, uh, they replaced the switch right here trying to fix it. And I think they got a wire wrong because there's no power going to the uh, part brake solenoid down there. I took uh, some little jumper alligator clips and uh, skin a wire on the work lights up there and hook it up to that solenoid and then turn the work lights on and I can hear the part brake release. The uh, light on the dash is not going out for some reason. I don't know what the deal is with that. And it's probably something to do with, like I said, the electrical problem. But um, whenever I uh, hook power to the solenoid, you know, it doesn't bog down and I can hear something back here turning. Um, we'll go ahead and stick the final drives in there, or the shafts in there, I suppose, um, and see what happens. But I'm pretty confident it's going to move. As I say, you can hear the engine changing sounds. So. Uh, We'll stick the final drives in here and see what happens. There's a final drive shafts in here and see what happens here. I don't know how difficult it's going to be to get these things in here because I'm pretty sure something's going to have to turn in order for it to line up with the splines whenever it goes in. Something's going to have to turn and then go in in the planetaries here. So uh, that may a little, be a little bit of a learning experience as well. I gotta figure out what size socket fits it. Because I do not remember. It's probably not that. I'm gonna say 15. 15 or 16, somewhere in that range. Let me go get the shaft. Let's look good in there. You see now it's got to rotate in order to line up. I'm going to crank the machine up, hook up my jumper wire to get the brake to release. I think I'm going to turn the rear end here. Do that. We'll see.
anyway, it looks promising. I'll have to check the oil. Probably wouldn't hurt to change the oil and pine drives. But uh, I gotta get all the stuff cleaned up and I'm gonna have to look at the uh, the switch that they put on right there that's for your your uh, safety shut off right here. But you see the pilot pressure is off this valve, so that's a mechanical linkage. That there, the only thing that does is allows you to start it. It's a neutral safety switch, and it also releases the part brake. And they put a new switch on there because it stopped moving because the charge pump broke, and uh, they thought it was that. So I think that they may have some wires on that switch crossed up because the part light's still on the dash, showing the brakes are not released. And I'm having to uh, bypass the part brake solenoid I got tied to the work lights up there, so I'm gonna turn the work lights on, it releases the park brake and allow me to move it. So anyway, I gotta do some electrical troubleshooting, figure that out. So I'm gonna wrap this video up. I think we got the thing where to move. I gotta do something else about this uh, <laughs> this fan ain't gonna work. It's gonna wind up cutting a hole in this uh, um, oil cooler up here like that. So I'm gonna have to uh, go ahead and either put the, put the front back on it right there so I can move the thing or Secure it in a little better way before I move it out of here. But anyway, just some loose ends I'll tie up, and uh, then we will get this thing out of here and uh, get the shop cleaned up, and then we can go about the further, the rest of the repairs we're going to be doing in this thing. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next video.